Delegates, it's a pleasure to second this chapter because it goes to the essence of improving the quality of life of our citizens and the critical role that government plays. Australia's vast geography presents unique infrastructure and service delivery challenges. Well-built cities and regions are essential if we're to overcome the tyranny of distance that many Australians know only too well. Well-connected communities are also critical to harness the opportunities of the digital economy as we strive to become more innovative and responsive in the face of technological disruption and globalisation. Delegates, to put it simply, investment, whether it be in roads, rail or communications infrastructure, is central for delivering meaningful improvements to quality of life that Australians experience. We need nation-building governments to provide the vision, the leadership and investment to get things done and to get the right things done. More importantly, this country needs a shortened Labor government because we are the only party with the leadership and capacity to make decisions for the long term. And this will be a distinguishing feature of Labor at the next election. In every aspect of our policy agenda, we haven't confined ourselves to one, three or six year blocks. We understand that some decisions will far outlive our tenure in Parliament. In contrast, our oppon opponents have no capacity for long-term thinking whatsoever. The Liberals have been reduced to a pack of opportunists lunging from one media cycle to the next. In every respect, they are a bunch of confused and vested interests still engaged in some existential search for a guiding policy principle. Just look at their approach to broadband. A decade ago, when John Howard was swept from office, Australia was left as a broadband backwater. We had a broken regulatory structure and clear market failure that demanded government intervention. So Labor's decision to deploy a ubiquitous national broadband network with fibre to 93% of the nation rightly took a long-term view of the needs of Australians as consumers and as taxpayers. Make no mistake, delegates, Labor's NBN was always a values proposition based on ensuring that every Australian, irrespective of where they lived or worked, had the opportunity to fully participate socially and economically through world-class broadband. And at the heart of this undertaking was the belief that if government was investing between 40 and $50 billion on an essential piece of national utility infrastructure, nothing less than the best would suffice for Australians. But enter Tony Abbott and Malcolm Turnbull and a purely political agenda to sabotage fibre at any cost. And the current minister, Mitch Firefield, is an individual who believes in nothing. He doesn't believe in broadband. He doesn't believe in the ABC. At one point, he thought he believed in making Peter Dutton prime minister, but that also came and went. So delegates, sometimes the nature of the contest allows us to reduce the points of difference to some real simple fundamentals. And that's because choices are ultimately a product of values. They are a party of copper and coal. We are the party of fibre and renewables. They are the party of short-term opportunism and we are the party of infrastructure investment focused on the long-term interests of the nation. And in closing, delegates, I just want to commend two other aspects of this chapter to you that demonstrate the difference between us and our opponents. As a proud member of the Transport Workers Union, I reiterate uh, Anthony's comments about safe rates and the need to ensure that we have safe rates in Australia. And secondly, as a proud former member of local government, as many of you are, I also want to highlight the work that will need to be done by an incoming Labor government to ensure that local governments who are doing more with less have what they need to continue delivering for their communities. I commend the chapter to you.